time now for our weekly news segment. Hey guys, happy weekend. Hello, Cody. <laughs> Tony. Tony. How are you guys? Good, man. Good. How you doing? Good, good. Um, it's it's kind of nice to see a lot of Tonys in the Monero community. We have Tony Davis, <laughs> and then we have a couple <laughs> of ones. So Tony's going strong. And then it's kind of funny yeah. how we have Florida in the comments, and I'm Tony, and then I'm also from Florida. But it was funny. But, but um, Monero is fungible, but but the Tonys are not. Each one is is unique in their own <laughs> right. That's for sure. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, Okay, let me share my screen. Yeah, the ring signature is just a bunch of Tonys. Uh, right now, 16 Tonys. <laughs> <I'll join this. laughs> um, okay, guys, so we have a lot of interesting stuff for this week. And the first one that we're going to discuss is the EU cash cap and ban on anonymous crypto payments results in financial paternalism. So the majority of the EU Parliament's lead uh, committees today approved far-reaching new anti-money laundering laws. And it's never been about anti-money laundering laws, but just about control. But anonymous cash payments over 3,000 euro will be banned in commercial transactions. Cash payments over 10,000 euro will e even be completely banned in business transactions. And anonymous payments in cryptocurrencies to wallets operated by providers. Hosted wallets will be prohibited even for a minimum amount amounts without a threshold um it's crazy so so there's so it's well first of all did this legislation actually pass or it was just i'm not i'm not totally clear on that i don't know if anybody really understands what's going on over there in the eu, EU parliament um i don't think it the majority of the eu parliament led committee today so the, a committee approved uh this anti-money or money laundering law but i don't know if it, if it generally passed in in the full parliament i'm not exactly sure but yeah the implications are are, are is, is, is crazy right so they're basically outlawing the use of anonymous crypto payments when they're made to a hosted wallet so like if you send it's not it would then be illegal to right effectively if you were to send monero to an exchange right Mm -hmm. It's they they didn't say it's illegal to send a peer to peer to unhosted wallets, um, but sending it to any any hosted wallet would be illegal for any amount, mm -hmm. uh, no threshold. And then they're also actually going after physical cash as well, putting additional restrictions on the use of physical cash as well. Uh, yeah, guys, get get Monero. <laughs> I don't I don't know what to say. I mean we we it's we the saw. Best we, Ever. We, we oh, saw it all coming, but it's freaking ramping up and it's ramping up fast. How would they enforce this? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, from from the end of the hosted hosted wallet side, uh, you know, I guess I guess these 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 companies are, are going to follow it. Right. Yep. They're, they're going to follow the, the regulations because that's what big companies do. They work with the regulators. They do. They have no choice unless they want to be shut down. But the interesting thing is that will this hit will this um law actually have a huge effect on crime and it's actually not gonna have a huge effect on crime and then is this something what the people wanted it is not what the people wanted because there was a great public outcry when the commission asked for the public for their opinion on limiting cash payments in 2017. not surprisingly more than 90 percent of responding citizens spoke out against such a step respondents considering payment anonymously in cash at essential personal freedom and other restrictions on payments and cash are ineffective in achieving the potential objectives fight against criminal activities terrorism tax evasion which these first two are definitely stuff that we don't want um <laughs> this one we can discuss tax evasion and according to an ecb survey up to 10 percent of citizens use cash even for amounts greater than ten thousand euro buying cars so actually not a lot of people use especially on a day-to-day -day basis, over 10,000 euro for a transaction. So this is for sure something that people did not want. And it's just a war against cash, a war against freedom, so that they, they put you on the CBDC and so that they can control everything. And as we talked in the past, um, they want to control where you go, what you eat. And they can do that if they have you on a CBDC system. So it's never about uh, anti-money laundering and protecting you against criminal activity and, ter and terrorism because they fund it anyway. They're, they're the ones that start most of the wars. So 
Um, yeah, interesting. And um, yeah, I guess it's been approved. I'm not sure if it's actually passed because we did talk about this in the past multiple times. Um, but yeah, it's something that is not not that good. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we'll keep following it and maybe we could have an expert on that's intimately familiar with this. Maybe somebody from uh, the, the pirate, the uh, what's it called? It's called like the, the pirate party in Europe. Um, we try to get, we've been trying to get that guy, that guy on, I think he was on a, a while ago. Uh, I'm sure he'd be intermittently familiar with all this and it's, it's a war on cash. It's a war on cash. And I actually, I, I do think this is the, th you know, this is the thing that could open up noobs eyes to the importance of Monero because they could very much understand the war on cash part. They, you know, they know that cash has always been a part of their society, and now they see their government attacking it and essentially banning the use of it. And I think that's a way to open up people's eyes to the, the larger problem and the need for a digital version of cash. So when cash no longer exists in the physical, we're going to need a replacement for it in the in the digital realm and that's where Monero comes in. So I I do think it's you know there's a silver lining there in terms of it's it's helping the noobs realize the importance of something like Monero because cash will no will no longer exist in the physical realm. Yep. And I kind of have a funny story in the 10,000 euro uh, cap. So whenever one time I had to go from America to Europe and had to bring over 10,000 just to give to um, to people and uh my mom was like yeah we should put it in envelopes and i was like yeah that's a, that's a horrible idea in case they check me and we just wrapped it in a bunch of um christmas stuff so that it looks like <laughs> like gifts because uh, if they do catch you bringing from america to europe with over ten thousand, you're gonna ask a bunch of questions why do you have so much cash why do you uh, so um yeah now let's talk about the uh, next thing which is interesting is monero stronger than bitcoin because holders spend it so uh, this is going to be a very interesting um, post to discuss. Uh, the former CEO of BitMEX, Arthur Hayes, previously opined that a spot Bitcoin ETF could completely destroy Bitcoin if they're too successful. According to Hayes, Bitcoin ETF issues holding all the Bitcoin would negatively impact the number of transactions, of course, on the Bitcoin network, and miners will lose any incentive to keep validating transactions. The end result is miners turn off their machines as they can no longer pay for the energy required to run them. Said Hayes, without the miners, the network dies and Bitcoin vanishes. Um, which is an interesting proposition. Also, another proposition is that eventually, um, when there's not going to be any more Bitcoin rewards, when we're going to cap on the 21 million, which is, you know, it's going to happen not in the foreseeable future, what's going to happen then? How are miners going to be incentivized to, to mine after that when there's not going to be any Bitcoin rewards and they're just going to have to pay, pay their energy expenditure? using the fees and if nobody's really using it yeah yeah i mean it's the problem with the whole uh bitcoin is digital gold meme if it's if it's digital gold that people are just storing and nobody's sending it uh the network just will will, will cease to to function uh it just won't work anymore you you need the in incentives for miners to mine and secure the network and now that everybody's basically purchasing their Bitcoin through ETFs where they don't actually hold the Bitcoin and all the Bitcoin are just being held by essentially Coinbase, actually, because uh, mm -hmm. I think that that was news that came out this week, too. I don't know if we have it here, but Coinbase is is the oh, yeah. company that's holding most of the crypto for these ETFs. Uh, it's just all sitting there. And nobody's actually trading, moving Bitcoin on chain anymore Then yeah, the whole system breaks. The whole system it's, it will 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 cease to to function as intended. Yeah. So actually, uh, that's a good segue to go into into this post from Bitcoin Magazine. So the Coinbase CEO says they're the custodian for ninety percent of the U.S. spot Bitcoin ETF assets, um, which is a large percentage. Um, Same. And it's, this is just the beginning as well. So um, let's go ahead and play this video and. So almost three Go minutes. Yep.
crypto outside of even just being a store of value here as many people see it as they're entering this asset class, some for the first time with the advent of these spot Bitcoin ETFs. It begs the question, how do you see the future of Coinbase? There are a lot of questions about the future of crypto exchanges in the world where Bitcoin ETFs have gotten so much share. Do you see Coinbase going far and above beyond being simply a crypto exchange? Yeah. So with the, you know, the ETFs that got approved, we've seen a huge influx of capital into the system. About $12 billion of inflow have happened. And, you know, some, when that happens, sometimes people ask us, well, what does that mean for Coinbase? Well, you know, it's actually incredibly positive for Coinbase. Um, we're storing, we're the custodian for about 90% of the assets in those Bitcoin ETFs. And so we have monetization opportunities there as a custodian, but we it didn't cannibalize any of the opportunity in our direct products too, our retail app, our institutional product. We actually saw increased inflows there while the while we saw $12 billion of inflow into the ETFs. So the ETFs were incredibly positive for the industry. They were a regulatory approval. They unlocked new pools of capital. And Coinbase is going to be not just a place where you store crypto. It's a place where you can actually trade crypto. You can use it increasingly in many different applications all over the world. And it's, and it's not just Bitcoin either. You know, we support um, over 100 different crypto assets. So we want Coinbase to be the most trusted and easiest to use place to, to store crypto, to trade it, and to actually use it. And it, we can actually become people's primary financial account in some cases in this new crypto economy. Kind of like a crypto bank? Yeah, one might say that. I don't think we're ever going to go get actually a bank license because banks get licenses to do fractional reserve of the assets. Um, I don't really think that's the right path. I think it's caused all kinds of issues with bank failures and, and that kind of thing. We don't want to do fractional reserve. We want to store 100% of customers' assets. Or if they prefer, they don't even have to store it with us. They can do self-custody. And you know, if they choose to opt in their funds into some product to um, earn rewards or something like that, they can choose to do that. We're not going to do it on their behalf um, in the way that banks do with fractional reserves. So it's a new paradigm. I think that um, there's a new generation of people who are looking at, they want to see crypto update the financial system because you know, 87% of Americans, when you survey them, they say the current financial system doesn't work for them. Fractional reserve is just one piece of that. But if you look at you know, credit card fees and overdraft fees, and why does it you know, take two or three business days to send an ACH transfer? And so our financial system really needs to get updated. And that's what we think is that crypto is this most important technology to update the financial system globally, bring economic freedom and good financial infrastructure to people all over the world if they just have a smartphone with an internet connection. So, <laughs> we went to Banks 2.0, essentially. If Satoshi Nakamoto is alive, um, he could be dead, could be alive, I don't know. And he's watching this right now. He would probably just roll his eyes and just think, what did my invention become right now? Because uh, essentially, it's just a Bank 2.0. It's not about revolution anymore. Um, you just put in coin Coinbase, you have a little Pokemon card that just sits there, and... Um, if you want to get out, you need to fill out all this information. Who are you, send who are you sending it to? You know, all this stuff. Um, so it's interesting what, what, it, what it's become. And yeah, Monero is the only one that, that's um, staying true to, to what the crypt crypto revolution should be. Anonymous, not caring about what others think. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, it's literally digital cash. It's like cash, but on the internet. And it's awesome. Uh, it's unfortunate. All right, let's let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Um, already talked about this. Let's discuss. Yeah, let's go to this one now. Uh, this one is very interesting. Potential measures against the black marble attack. Um, so recently, Monero has been experiencing a sudden surge in on-chain transaction volume, fifteen k, twenty-five k uh, per day, to one hundred fifteen to one hundred forty k per day, which is uh, quite a big jump. Um, also, last week we had a lot of viewers, which is nice. Um, don't forget to like, guys. So if you're watching this and you haven't liked yet, like, share, comment. Um, and we appreciate you being being with us uh, every weekend. Now, um, I highly recommend that you look into this article, uh, well, this GitHub post, um, because it's very, um, very interesting. But essentially, um, what happened with the transactions, we can't prove it's not a black marble attack. Some people said it's just organic activity. Some others say that it's not. 
And since Monero is primarily a tool for pri preserving privacy, we should err on the side of defensiveness. And I really like this line. We don't have the luxury of assuming the optimistic scenario, right? Uh, since the downside is that people who rely on Monero are exposed to excess danger. And this is what's very nice about Monero is the way that we think about privacy. We, just, we don't just throw the, the word privacy. We mean privacy. We Privacy is um, taken in, in its utmost um, definition. It should be something that protects your life. Um, and it should be something that you really trust if you have to. Uh, this situation is simply a reminder that such an attack is currently very practical and cheap in Monero, which is indeed cheap. And then below, you have information on measures. The below is an inform informal summary of potential measures we have been discussing that can counter such an attack applicable to the Monero protocol in its current state. Uh, since none of these measures is the ultimate one that solves the root issue, some of them can be thought of as a temporary change that can be reverted if, when, Monero is upgraded to full chain membership proofs. And um, I'm going to go, go over these um, quickly because... Um, so the first one is do nothing, avoids rush decisions, mistakes that could make things worse and take on another upgrade to uh, remedy. Many of these interventions can be rendered ineffective if attacker has a lot of resources. You have the pros and the con on this side. The con could be attacker can keep lowering the effective ring size at the same costs as now. We can increase the ring, uh, ring size, modify existing dynamic block size parameters, intru introduce ultra long-term sanity median Attacker may eventually reduce stop, reduce slash stop their uh, transactions due to higher tax uh, fees, their, their tax due to higher tax fees costs. Um, the con is require upgrade, eventually higher tax fees in general will have effect only on a very long time scale. Increase the minimum protocol um, tax fee, increase the minimum no relay tax fee, a transaction fee, sorry, uh, introduced transaction uh, proof of work, and then omitted measures, measures discussed that omitted about omitted from the table because they don't seem to be applicable, introduce full chain membership proofs, which is the ultimate solution to attacks that reduce the effective uh, ring size, but it's not. It's currently not in a deployable state. Uh, shift decoy selection distribution towards older you nodes, know, counterattack. This would really on honest, uh, on honest participants uh, conducting a counter flood keeping the resulting de-anonymizing transaction data safe and then securely erasing it. All these involve unverifiable actions and unless perfect, perfectly coordinated among all participants, they would be unable to tell if an attack was over or not. Miners limit their size of their blocks. Um, I highly encourage you going to uh, this link and I read this for yourself because it's very, um, very interesting on the potential measures against this attack. I really like that, uh, that that graph that he made, that's super, that's cool mm -hmm. to see. That's very nice. Okay. Yeah, I mean, ba basically uh, something's gonna need to be done. It seems like, um, I think the most likely scenario is we increase the amount of decoys that we have uh, sooner than waiting for the Seraphis upgrade. Uh, I think that's the direction things are gonna go. Yeah, there were some talks about raising ring signatures to 40, which would probably um, at least double the transaction size, which would also, of course, make the fee go up a bit to compensate. But at least, you know, people are getting more privacy instead of just raising the fee. Right. And we kind of kind of get us ready for full membership proofs, right? Because fees are going to go up with that. Transactions are going to get larger with that as well. Uh, and then at that point, we won't be using uh, rings and decoys anymore. Um, and it allows us to increase our privacy faster without having to wait for full membership proofs. Uh, obviously, ideally, as, as this, this write-up says, ideally, full membership proofs being implemented would be the, the ultimate solution. It's just going to take time to get there. It may take, you know, whatever it is, a year and a half. So to be cautious, it would be probably make sense to increase the ring size now, uh, since that's something we could do quickly. Mm -hmm. But once we do introduce full chain membership proofs, Monero is going to be <laughs> on steroids for sure. Uh, it's going to be incredible. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, let's go on to this. So um, let's open this on another link. Uh, GNIP. So this is supply equipment to the anti-authoritarian fighters in front of Ukraine. 
and you can now donate to them in Monero and USDT. And then we have uh, Drunk Dials Me response. I don't support NATO or mixed war of aggression in Ukraine, but I support floss drone development, voluntary funding of decentralized resistance hardware and Monero. If picking a side of NATO's belligerence is your thing. Okay. Then let's actually go to, let's go to this article. Actually, no. We'll go. There was one that I really wanted to touch on right now. Yeah, let's discuss this one actually right now. Um, Zeno. So they said we made history uh, after years of hard work and a good couple of hours of sweating, waiting for the first blog. The, the Zarkanium hard work went live. So let's take a look a little bit on what this is all about. Um, it's quite long, so I'm not going to go over the whole thing, but just uh, just a summary of it. Um, this is very interesting. So essentially, uh, I, I really wonder how private Zarkanium really is, but essentially how Zarkanium ZPoS makes P POS private. Zarkanium improves upon traditional POS in two fundamental ways. Mount privacy, the number of coins in the staked output is hidden. Untraceability, the output itself is hidden within a group of equip equiprobable decoy outputs. Yeah, and I mean, it uses, it uses the same technology that Monero uses. Um, it's based off of CryptoNote. Yep. Uh, but what was, what's interesting here is they've invented a way to do private proof of stake. Um, first in the space to do it. They actually work with Co on this. Co is a, a Monero dev. Um, so super cool to see that they successfully were able to implement it and make this upgrade. And then there's other things as well, in addition to the private proof of stake that they're implementing, that are also uh, implementing confidential assets. So similar to what Tari promises to be, but uh, Xano kind of beat them to the bunch. They exist, they're live. They have this confidential assets ability. Uh, so you can, you know, make make assets on top of Xano um, and in a private way, which is which is pretty interesting. I mean, what interests me most in that regard is a privacy uh, a privacy stable coin, perhaps that could be built on top of Xano. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's something that I would I would like to see. Yeah, for sure, that would definitely change the game, especially when paying um developers monero we do have um you know the fluctuation in price so a, a private stable coin would you know solve some of their issues um yeah but this is very interesting so um it's good to see let's go to um let's go to this one this one is again a lengthy um article executive order on ensuring responsible development of digital assets this is from um, Joe Biden. So, uh, Section 1 policy advances in digital and distributed ledger technology for financial services have led to dramatic growth in markets for digital assets. Um, profound implications for the protection of consumers, investors, and businesses, uh, including data privacy and security, financial stability and systemic risk, crime, national security, the ability to exercise human rights, financial inclusion and equity in energy demand, and uh, climate change. Um, then we have um, all kinds of objectives, like um, this one, we must protect consumers, investors, and businesses in the United States. Uh, we must protect the United States and global financial stability and mitigate systemic risk. Uh, we must mitigate the illicit finance and national security risks um, posted by misuse of digital assets. Uh, then talk about financing terrorism and all this stuff, digital assets for the anti-money laundering. Uh, Poor or non-existing implementation of those standards in some jurisdiction abroad can present significant illicit financing risk for the United States and global financial systems. Um, it's going to be curious of how that's going to be implemented. Um, we must reinforce United States leadership in the global financial system. Uh, must promote access to safe and affordable financial services. Um, so all kinds of stuff. I highly recommend that um, if you're interested, read this all. Um, paper written by Joe Biden. Um, his handlers. Yeah. His, his executive order. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's just 
a further uh, encroachment on on privacy tech and crypto. Um, they're making moves, guys. They're making moves. They're, they're laying out the whole roadmap for us. They're letting they're letting us know that they're 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 coming for us. The administration's roadmap to mitigate cryptocurrency risks. Thank you, Biden. <laughs> Thank you, Biden. <laughs> All right. Does Biden have any idea what's going on with with any of that? Absolutely not. I just signed. He a just piece wants of paper. his ice cream. That's that's it. That's the only reason he, he lives, so he can have ice cream. Oh my god! Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, let's watch this video. It's one minute. It's on uh, John Arvalo. Bitcoin error log has woken up to the fact that the design of the Bitcoin like network is a joke. So. Let's go ahead and watch. The degree of complexity and fragility of Lightning, and, and especially for the use case that people intend for it, which is like end users running their own nodes, um, and even and even more crazy end users have running their own routing nodes, um, it's just very, very fragile. And going through that experience just made me realize that the design is kind of a joke. Like, we can make it work. Um, we can do our best. But it, like all of the kind of narratives that came with it in the first couple of years were were really exaggerated. You know, like things like Lightning is going to kill Visa, and everybody will be using Lightning. And there are a lot of issues with scaling it economically. There are a lot of issues with uh, dealing with all of the multiple implementations and incompatibilities, and again, the fragilities causing force closes liquidity management and it just like, goes on and on and on and all of the things that like people that aren't engineers and aren't building these products like even if they, they feel like they fully appreciate the complexity because they like study it a lot they still don't get it like it's just it's just so much worse than people think to actually make this stuff and string it together it would be nice if it killed visa but it would be nicer if it actually worked well as well <laughs> um yeah but that's it's very good to see uh, someone from Bitcoin that is working on on uh, Bitcoin that you know he's uh, he's seeing the uh, miscomings of of uh, the technology and then he talks about it openly. Um, that's good to see. Yeah, I mean, Lightning. It's it's interesting because um, Lightning itself would actually be better if they fixed the issue on the base layer which is why they created lightning, which is, you know, the block size and the fees. Cause the part of the reason why lightning sucked. Yeah. Lightning's really complicated. Um, but you know, a layer two could be needed for something like Monero in the, in the future. Um, but lightning itself is not great. Um, it's, it's pretty, it's not great technology. It's very hard to implement. It's frustrating to use. And then the biggest issue is that the whole reason lightning was created, which was to get around having to do transactions on layer one because of the fees well you end up doing that a lot anyway just to add more liquidity to your channel you have to do another on-chain transaction and it's not it's not great it's not great yeah i know um that's yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be interesting oh uh, what body said in the comments which i wanted to say oh yeah it's hilarious to watch all the laser eyes on twitter talk shit at john not realizing that he's a bitcoin dev himself um yeah but if even if your technology is not good in some aspects it's very, very important to remain open and to really work on making it better um which a lot of people from the bitcoin community are are not and they just you know blindly say that it's the best without really yeah um let's go into the next thing and th this one is actually really disturbing so um ENX x Google. Um, the news is true. Google now gives wallet information for ENS name searches. One step closer to mass adoption. So you can just look up vitalik.eth and then you're going to get his um, Ethereum balance. We have arrived. Yay. It's, mass it's adoption. It's happening, guys. Nice. You can look up from Google how much people, how much money people have. Uh, Fucking Pony said this is gross. And it is gross. I, see, this is why I, I put my ENS domain on a dedicated wallet that has basically no Ethereum on it. 
because mm-hmm. Ethereum's not private. Yeah, but this this is next level um, of invasion of privacy, and it, this this is mass adoption. Being able to just say uh, Tony dot if, and you can see the if or dog dot if or you know, uh, this is this is really disturbing. I mean, is it? I mean, you could already do that with like um, tools, I'm sure, but now it's yeah. just exposed on Google. Yeah. Um, and I did try that myself earlier, and I couldn't get to show that. Um, yeah. So maybe they're still rolling it out. Mm-hmm. It is funny though how like the, how excited they are about this. Like the actual ens.ethorg is like, yeah, look at this. You can just pull up anyone's domain and see how much Ethereum they have. And this Vitalik guy has just like almost one k Ethereum. <laughs> it's too funny. Somebody posted a, a clown gif and they said, "Let's make it even easier to dock someone's holdings." <laughs> yeah, so now you can Hooray. pretty much. Yay! Yeah. Um... You can find someone's address now. You can find someone's pictures. You go on Facebook, whatever, and like you can find their how much money they have. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, not good. Um, this one is also we had really good. Uh, I mean, not somewhere not positive news, but um, really interesting news for this week. Um, the Iranian regime has passed a law allowing for the auto deduction of money from bank accounts of women who don't adhere to mandatory hijab. They'll use surveillance plus AI to find violators. Yet another example of how fiat currency is a tool of control. Yeah, fiat currency, banks for sure, but CBDC as well. Uh, but that's that, that's why that's why they're pushing CBDCs. That's what they're doing. What they're doing in Europe, as we saw, there was a study in 2019. They asked a bunch of people, "Do you?" Do you like cash? And ninety percent of people say, "Yeah, we want cash." Um, what are they doing now in two thousand twenty-four? They're trying to get rid of cash, and people don't want that. Uh, which is going to be—that's that, definitely going to pass in the West of Europe first. Eastern Europe is going to be, I think, really resilient when it comes to that, because um, we have a lot of countries that are cash dominant. Albania is extremely cash dominant, so I'm curious of. Um, of how that's gonna go like you i struggled when i was there to use my credit card at all i didn't want to use it anyway but even if i really had to because if they didn't want it um just cash romania you can use um debit cards in a lot of places but cash is still very dominant people like cash so eastern europe is gonna definitely lag when it comes to the stuff which is good um yeah but that, that's what they're gonna that's why they want to get rid of cash limit it get you on the systems yeah, it's going to be interesting eventually when we're probably going to cover a, a news section which we discuss incentives of how they want us to use CBDCs, like get discounts, like 20%, 30% discounts for such and such if you use a CBDC. They're going to make incentives for people to to get on the system. Um, yeah, but this, this, is, um, this is just one example of what they're going to do. So, yeah. Well, uh, I'm pretty sure that was it for this week. I don't think we have anything else. Yeah, no, uh, that was it for this week, guys. This was a new segment. All right.